Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to access secrets that are stored in the Amazon Secrets Manager service from a AWS Lambda function. And for those of you that don't know anything about Secrets Manager, it's a really great way to store hard-coded things like API keys or database usernames and passwords. Basically any secret string values or even byte form data that you want to store, instead of having to hard-code it into your source code, you can store it in Secrets Manager and then at runtime be able to access that programmatically from your code. So it's a very, very powerful service and I'm going to be doing a whole video on Secrets Manager in the future. So I'll put that in the card in the top right when it's available. Um, so in order to access a secrets from Secrets Manager in our Lambda function, obviously we first need to create our secret. So that's going to be our first step. So let's do that now. So you can either click on Secrets Manager if you have it stored in your history, or you can go to the top and type in Secrets and it should pop up here. Yep, so there is Secrets Manager. So just clicking on that. And this is the home screen of Secrets Manager. You can see I already have a secret that's used for something else. Uh, I'm gonna be clicking on in the top right here, the orange button, so store a new secret. And by the way, there is a 40 cent cost per secret for using this service. So just be aware of that. If you are experimenting or if you're on the free tier or anything like that, this will cost you extra, but it's great from a security perspective to use. Okay, so in this wizard, we have a couple options that are available to us automatically. So we first need to select the secret type that we want to store. So it's giving us some options for RDS database, a document DB database, a Redshift cluster, another database, or another type of secret. So if you are using RDS, uh, DocumentDB, or Redshift, I highly suggest for you to use these three predefined options just because what you get in addition to storing your secret is automatic uh, secret rotation, which is basically an additional lever of security or additional level of security, I should say, on top of um, the storage of your secret itself. However, if you're just storing like a secret value in plain text, maybe it's like an API key for GitHub, API key for Twitter or access credentials, something like that, uh, you'll want to use this one here. Uh, and you can also use this for things like database credentials as well if you want. So if you just don't like these and you don't want to use them for some reason, you can use this kind of super flexible mode, uh, which is the one that we are going to be using in this demonstration. All right. So after selecting that, it is now asking us for the key value pairs. So you have a couple options here. You you can store like a JSON object if you want, where you put in like the key name here and the key password. Uh, or you can just put in plain text. Say you have like, I don't know, some kind of um, plain text string that you want to put in here. You don't want any JSON. You can just put that in here. But for this case, I'm just going to put, um, you know, key value pairs here. So let's call this uh, just key and value. It doesn't really matter here. And for the encryption key, we are going to use the AWS provided KMS encryption key. Um, this is kind of an important detail, so I just wanted to spend a moment, or, a moment or so talking about this. So when you create an AWS account, you automatically have access to KMS keys, which will manage the key that is used to encrypt your data. So by default, if you just leave this as is, this is the AWS managed KMS key. And in addition, you can also create your own KMS key. So that's what it's saying here. So add a new key. And why this is important is because if you use just the normal AWS provided KMS key, then you only need a certain set of permissions to access your secret key and your secret value. I know I'm using the, the word key here a lot. Actually, you know what, while I'm here, let's just call this something else. So um, I don't know, um, secrets, secrets and password. <laughs> so we stop using the word key. Anyways, um, if you use your own custom managed or custom created KMS key, you need some different permissions. So um, if you look here, I actually have a separate one created. This is my own managed one uh, that I created, so test key, and this is the AWS managed one. So I'm gonna create two different secrets here, one for both of these, and show you how um, it differs when you're trying to access them from AWS Lambda. Now, why would you want to create a, your own KMS key? Well, maybe you you have your own kind of a key material encryption value that you want to use, or maybe it's something that's specified from your organization, or maybe you want more control over who can decrypt materials. Uh, so that's why you would use your own managed one. But for this, we're just going to use the default for now. And I'm going to come back here in a second and create the second version that has my own key. All right. So we're going to go to next now, and you can call this whatever you want. Let's call this... Um, what name can I give this? So AWS Managed Secrets. 
Okay, I'm just going to put this in my clipboard to the side here so I do not forget it. Okay, perfect. And it's going to scroll down here. You don't need to fill in anything else. Click on next now. Uh, okay, really quick on this. There's this concept of automatic rotation of your secret values. So you can set it up so that periodically um, Secrets Manager will change the values of your stored credentials. If you want something that is going to stay fixed and not change, then you don't want to use rotation. But some services like uh, RDS and Redshift and DocumentDB, those things that we saw at the beginning there, they offer automatic key rotation and it's a fully managed key rotation for you. But um, I'm not going to be using this in this case, but it's cool to know that it exists. If you did decide to use this, then you need to provide a Lambda function uh, ARN that is going to transform the key into the new value. But it's a lot of headache, so I'm not going to do that in this demonstration. Uh, let's go to next now, review, cool, that's fine. Um, gives you kind of some cool code here to show you how to access this. We're going to be using something uh, pretty pretty similar. Uh, going to click on store here. If you click on refresh now, you should see it. There we go. So AWS Managed Secret. Let me just show you what this looks like really quick. So now if you click on this, you go to retrieve secret value. There's our secret key and our secret value. There it is in plain text as well. So everything's working correctly here. Uh, let's go and create our secret using a KMS key that is custom made. So store new secret, same thing, um, so whatever we can put in. Um, I can't remember what I put in here. So whatever, secret and password. I think that's what it was. And we are going to select our custom KMS key now and click on next um, and call this the same thing except for custom managed secrets and scroll down next disable rotation that's fine and review that's fine too let's go ahead and click on store now and now we should have two different secrets that are stored here okay perfect so we are now ready to go into our Lambda function now and create that and add the code to actually access this stuff. So I'm going to duplicate tab really quick because I'm going to want to come back here, I'm sure, just to refer to stuff. Um, so we're going to type in Lambda in this second tab and we're going to go to Lambda and we're going to create a function. We're going to author this function from scratch. Um, let's call this um, secrets manager um, key retriever. I don't know. You can name this whatever you want. And for runtime, we're going to use Python 3.9. Architecture doesn't matter. For permissions, we're going to leave the default execution role here. So it's going to create a brand new role for us. But we're going to need to modify that. And that's actually in the next step, which I'll explain in a second here. So go to create function now. And sometimes this takes a moment. So I will fast forward it if it takes too long. All right, so as you can see from the top here, we successfully created the Lambda function. And so what I want to do is I just want to scroll down under the code section and drop in some code that's going to let me access our secret. All right, so I'm just going to paste this. Oops, sorry about that. I'm just going to paste that in here and walk you through what is going on. So secret name, this is just a hard coded value for our secret that we have stored in the Secrets Manager service. The region, I am in US East 1. Here is your region. It's up here. Um, so if you're in USC2, change this value. Uh, we're creating a Boto3 session. We are creating a client of the type Secrets Manager and passing in the region name, which is currently this value up here, USC1. This is the body of the Lambda function. So our first step is to call the Secrets Manager. So we're storing the response in this value here, or this variable. And we're saying client.getSecretValue, so calling the getSecretValue API. And in the secret ID, we're passing in the secret name, which is, of course, AWS Managed Secret. And then we are just printing out the response from the API call. And then in this section here, we're extracting out, out of the dictionary a key called secret string, and then we are printing out the secret. So uh, if I invoke this right now, this is actually going to fail. And why is it going to fail? Because we don't have the correct permission associated with this Lambda function yet. So let's try this out. So I'm going to click on deploy really quick. And okay, it's deploying. Click on test. And we're going to... Uh, you just got to put an event name here just so we can test this. doesn't really matter. We're going to get an access denied exception here when we click on test. And so let's see this. Uh, Boto3 is not defined. Of course, I didn't import some things, which is silly of me. So let me do that. And Boto3. Okay, let's do this again. Okay. And we're done here. So let's click on test. 
And there you go. So you can see an error occurred here, access denied exception when calling get secret value. So what's happening is that we are missing the permission uh, to call secrets manager. So we need to go and add that. Um, so what we can do is we can go into the configuration section of our Lambda function and go to the permissions tab, which I have selected right here. And we need to modify our execution role. We need to give it that get secret value permission. So I'm going to open this in a new tab here so we can come back later. And okay, so now we're in IEM and this is the role that we need to modify. If you don't know much about IEM, you probably want to watch my video on it, IEM Core Concepts. Uh, you can search for that on my channel. Okay, so what we want to do here is under the permissions policy section in the permission tab, we want to click on the button or the drop down here that says add permissions. And we can just create a inline policy here that's going to provide us what we need. So for service, we are going to click on that and we're going to say secrets manager, secrets manager. And um, we're going to look for the get secret value uh, API. So there it is here. And we now have that selected. Another thing you need to do is you need to specify the resources that you want to grant access to. If this was a production case, what I would do is I would go grab the ARN. So I would leave this on specific. I would go and grab the ARN from secrets manager and then put the value in here. So I would go here. I would go list ARNs manually. I would just paste in that ARN. Because this is just a demonstration, close please. Uh, because this is just a demonstration, I'm gonna do, just do all resources now because I need this because um, for other reasons, we have basically two keys that we need to access. So this will make my life easier. So that's all you need for now. So let's just go to review policy now. Um, let's, let's just call this the secrets policy. See, or you can name this whatever you want and create policy now and it should be attached to our role so there you go you see a secrets policy and if you expand it you can see what we just provided access to which is get secret value api now if we go back to our um, lambda function here and we go back to the code section and we just try to invoke this again so this was the previous error uh, click on test you can see here, this is the raw response after calling the API. And this is the secret and the password that we stored in Secrets Manager. So everything is working correctly here. So now I wanna show you, what if you try to access a secret that is currently being guarded by a custom managed KMS key, which was that second case that we talked about earlier. So we need to make some small changes. So let me show you what's gonna happen if we just try to do this by default. So we're gonna change the secret name that we're trying to access, so just custom. And we're going to deploy this and you're going to see we're going to get a access denied error as well. So let's try this out and see what it says. So test and you can see now we have access denied exception when we're calling get secret value. What is the error? If I scroll over access to KMS is not allowed. Why is that happening? Well, it turns out that if you use a secret that is guarded by a non AWS managed KMS key, you need to grant your Lambda function additional IAM permissions. And the permission that you need is the KMS decrypt action. So that's what we need to go and add now to our IAM role. So let's go and do that really quick. So I'm just going to go back to my old tab in the IAM section since we, we already did this. Um, let's add a new permission policy. We're going to do the same thing. So create inline policy. We're going to choose a service. We're looking for the KMS service now. KMS service. And we are looking for the decrypt action. There it is. And similar kind of story, um, you want to use the specific resource when possible. But for my case, uh, since I'm lazy here, I'm just going to use all. I'm going to go to review policy and you can name this whatever you want. KMS decrypt in my case uh, or decrypt, depending on how you want to say it. Create policy. And we should see now we have three policies. Yeah, so one for the role, one for the secrets, and one for KMS decrypt. So let's go back to our Lambda function now. And if we try to invoke this again by and try to access the custom managed secret, and we click on test, this should work now. So there you go. So everything is working correctly. So I'll make this code available to you if you want to try this out. In addition, the IAM policy documents that I used as well. And if you enjoyed this video, check out these other ones on AWS to the left and right. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.